In this last part of the series, we're going to use the code index we created to power a coding agent. Specifically, we will discuss context engineering, the process of giving a language model the correct context it needs to complete a task. What we're going to build here is a very simple example that will hopefully drive home how you can do context engineering well. If you're looking for production-grade coding agents, we recommend tools like Cursor, Cloud Code, or Factory AI. Our goal is to build an AI program that can take our indexed code base and answer questions about it. Let's take a step back and think how we would operate if given a code base for a web app, for example, and asked a question about it, like, how does auto-scrolling work here? We would probably make a mental task list, like search for scrolling-related code, read snippets of code that we decided are relevant, and compile an answer for ourselves. To complete each one of these tasks, we would take a series of steps along the way. For example, to look for scrolling-related code, we may hit Command-Shift-F on VS Code with the string scroll, choose the first hit we find, if it's a function call, find its definition, and so on. When we proceed to the next step, we make a mental note of our findings from the previous one that are relevant for the next task. Of course, in reality, we don't really follow this explicit process unless we're dealing with hugely complicated tasks. We're able to keep a lot of context in our head and produce answers for fairly simple questions like this. However, AI models can benefit from this framework. They are stateless, and at every interaction, they only know about the prompt from the user and what we provide as context. We already know that the simplistic approach of dumping the entire code base with our question will give us bad results. Instead, we can take our overarching goal, break it down to more specific or even specialized tasks, and at every step, give the model the data and tools that will help it accomplish that step. When we're done with the step, we can have the model evaluate its results against our initial plan and decide whether we are done, we need to change our plan completely, or proceed to the next step. We can also decide what information needs to be carried over to the next specialized task. In fact, we can argue that building an agent is mostly about taking a user prompt, break it down to an execution plan in order to build the most optimal context for every step. More formally, given the user prompt, we can create a query plan, a set of steps needed to accomplish the task. Then for every step of our plan, we can build the correct context, which is essentially deciding what does the model need to see right now. The building blocks of this process are retrieval. This is the data we have in our Chroma collections that we want the model to use for the current task. Formatting, which is the way we structure our prompts to the model. We can use examples, schemas for input and output, or system prompts. Tools, which we expose to the model. We can also think about how we can help it select the correct one. And memory. We can carry over information from previous interactions that would benefit the model for completing the current task. Of course, most of these processes are going to be AI-driven themselves. OK. Now that we have a good mental model of how we can do context engineering well, let's write some code. As a first step, let's set up our agent function. It will kick off our indexing logic to make sure we have the latest state of our repo properly indexed. Remember that with Chroma's forking feature, this will be super fast. This function will take in a user query and the repo we're working with. We'll use the same git repo abstraction as we did in part two we can modify our index function to return the latest index it created. Next up, we'll take the user input and generate a to-do list out of it. This is our query plan. We're going to use the OpenAI API, but you can achieve the same results with any other provider you like to use. Here, we're going to use structured output to get a to-dos plan object. Let's define the schema for it using Zod. Every step will have an ID, title, description, and status. And we can use the schema in a chat completions call. Our system prompt tells the model to think about the user's query like an expert software engineer answering questions on a particular code base. This is important context for the model, as some user questions may sound general even though they want an answer that's anchored in our code. 
now we're able to break down the user's question into specific execution steps for the language model. Let's move forward to running each step of our generated plan. We want to give the model the tools to execute each step. In our case, these are retrieval abilities over our indexed code base. We can give the model the ability to search for specific code constructs like functions or classes by their name, get the full contents of a file, search the code base using regex or semantic search, or full text search with metadata constraints. The Chroma API and our chunking strategy allows us to do all of these very easily. We already identified our wanted syntactic constructs in our chunking process, and they have the symbol name metadata field. We can use it to find classes or functions by name. All chunks have the file path field, which we can use if we need the contents of an entire file. We can use the regex operator to run regex searches. And we can use collection.query for a semantic search, since we used an embedding model specialized for code embeddings. Our chunks are logical parts of the code base, and that in itself was a context engineering decision. For any of these search operations, the results we get back from Chroma should provide sufficient context for the hits. We can also provide other useful tools like run a shell command, edit a file if we want a more active coding agent, or search the internet. Let's see an example of how we can define a tool for symbol name search. We start off by defining the shape of our tools. They should have a name, description, a list of parameters the model will send us for the tool execution, a function to parse the model's tool call request, and the actual execution function. For our symbol search tool, we give it a name and a description. Notice that the symbol types we specify here correspond to our wanted nodes from our chunking algorithm. We want to get the parameters or arguments for this tool as an object. And the only required field is really the symbol name we are searching for. Let's call it query. We can have the model specify the file paths where we should look for the symbol, since this information is available on all chunks. We can write a Zod parser for these arguments. And let's write the execution itself. We submit a get request on our collection with metadata filtering for the symbol name. If we get multiple results, this means that a tree sitter node in our code base was too large and was split by lines. So let's reconstruct it. The implementation for the other tools will be fairly similar, taking advantage of Chroma's API and the metadata tags we defined on our chunks. And back in our agent function, let's define our list of tools. We can also generate our task list and set up the iteration over it. Next up, let's write a helper for running the current step in our query plan. We will take in the current step to execute, the user's question, and the list of tools the model can use. The idea here is that we're going to issue a series of interactions with the model until the step is complete. To defend against an infinite loop, we can take in the maximum turns we will give the agent to interact with the model. Remember that at this point of our context engineering work, we need to decide what does the model see right now. Let's format the prompts to the model. In the system message, we will tell the model that it is currently solving one step of our plan, and it should call tools until it has enough information to compile a result. In the developer message, we can provide a model with application level information. So we give the model the specifics about the current step of our plan. And then we can add the user message with the original question from the user. Before we start interacting with the model, we need to modify the shape of our tools to agree with the OpenAI format. Let's create a small helper for that and save the results in our run step function. Now we can start the conversation with the model. As long as we did not surpass our turn limit, we issue chat completions request. For simplicity, we will ask the model to only use one tool at a time by setting parallel tool calls to false. Let's extract the tool requested by the model. If no tool was called, we are done. Otherwise, let's find the correct tool object. Note that for simplicity, we're assuming that the model chose an existing tool. For a production system, you'd want to handle some failure modes here. 
we parse the arguments chosen by the model for this tool and execute it. When we have the result of the tool call, we add it to our ongoing list of messages with the model so it can see it at the next run and decide what to do next. When this loop breaks, we are done executing a step in our query plane. Let's give the output of this function some structure. We will have a step outcome persist its status, whether it succeeded, failed, or timed out, the step ID, and a summary of the execution. We will use this schema to ask the model to generate the summary for us. So we include here instructions on how to generate the summary field. OK, when we break from the loop, we can check if we exceeded our max turns. If so, for simplicity, we can save a call to the model and simply return a step outcome indicating a timeout. Otherwise, let's make one more call to the model, asking it to summarize the results of running this step. We use structured output with the step outcome schema we defined and add a developer message telling the model to create a summary of our ongoing conversation. All right, back in our agent function, let's grab the current step in our plan and call our run step helper. We'll also shift the plan to remove the step we have just completed. We want to save all the outcomes to produce the final answer after we have ran through our plan. If the outcome's status is failed or timeout, we break. At this point, we have an outcome from the current step, and we'd like the model to evaluate it against our query plan. The plan decision object will have a decision status. We can either continue with our current steps, finalize the result if we have enough information, or revise the rest of our plan. We will ask the model to give us a reason for its decision status that we can display to the user. Then define a field for the new steps if the decision is to revise. Let's write a helper function for the evaluation step. It will take in the user query, the most recent step outcome, and the remaining steps in our plan. Let's set up the system and developer messages for the model and get the response from the model. We'll use structured output using our plan decision schema. Back in our agent function, let's call the evaluate helper on the current step outcome. If the decision is to finalize the answer, we can break. And if the decision is to revise our plan, we update. Finally, when we finish going over our plan, we will ask the model to provide the final answer based on all of the step outcomes. OK, all done. Note that this is a fairly simple setup, and there is much more we can do to make this process more robust. We can handle model failures, add human in the loop feedback, and much more. Let's check out our agent in action. I hooked up our agent logic to a simple VS Code extension written in React. Our agent code lives in the extension's backend and will post messages to the front end on every step. The React front end listens to these messages and displays them appropriately. For example, when the to-dos plan is generated, we send the plan object in a message to the front end, which displays it in a component. OK, so we can ask a question here, like, how does the auto scrolling work? And if we send it, we can see the agent starting to think about it. And it gave us our query plan. And we can see it start calling tools. So it chose full text search first with auto scroll. It had to call it again because probably the first one didn't get good results. It still got bad results, so it's trying to use semantic search right now. And looks like it got the correct chunks. And we got a pretty good answer here. The auto scrolling is implemented in this chat messages component um, with a pretty solid explanation. Let's ask the agent, how is state managed in this app? Give me specific examples. And we can see the agent is starting to think about our question. It gave us back its query plan. It is using semantic search with state management as the query. And it found some good chunks. So it's calling get file um, for the app context file. 
and looks like it was able to get enough information to generate a tensor. And yep, we see that state is managed uh, in this file. We get specific uh, state variables here. Um, that's pretty cool. Let's recap what we achieved. Remember that in context engineering, we want to optimize for what the model needs to see right now. We took a general user query, broke it down to specialized tasks using query planning, and for each task, we used tool calling, prompt formatting, and retrieval to produce the optimal context. But this is not the whole story. To build a real robust context engineering system, we can go even further and think about how we can iteratively improve this process over time. From every run of our agent function, we can learn quite a bit to improve the next one. We can ask, did we complete the task successfully? Did we need to change our plan? At what point could we have carried any information over to the next step? Is there any information that can be shared with future runs? And can we compress our findings so far? Even in our simple example, there are many places where we can track and use this kind of information. Our run step function can receive context from the agent function on how to complete the step. In our step outcome objects, we can track what tools were used for each step or what file paths turned out to be useful for particular tasks. In our agent function, we can also persist all the decisions made by the evaluate helper. This is all useful information that can help us make better decisions in future runs. You can imagine logging it in Chroma Collections and give our agent the ability to consult these memories. That's all for this series. We hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.